In this lesson, we continue our introduction to AC steady state analysis by analyzing simple circuits with one resistor, one capacitor, and one inductor. To continue our analysis of AC steady state circuits, let's look at the circuit with an inductor, a capacitor, a resistor, and a current source with an amplitude A, a phase theta degrees, and a frequency of F hertz. If we use the frequency to convert each of the passive elements to their impedance, then the circuit might look like this, where I sub S is the phasor value for the current source. Now if we wanted to know the current flowing from node 5 to node 4, we could note that the current from the source splits between the capacitor and the resistor, and then use the current divider relationship to determine how much of the current splits to flow through the resistor. Then using this current, we could evaluate the voltage drop from node 5 to node 4 by using the Ohm's Law type relationship for impedances. Likewise, if we wanted to find the voltage drop from node 1 to node 3, we could apply the same relationship to the impedance for the inductor. And finally, we could evaluate the, no, the voltage drop from node 1 to node 0 as the drop from node 1 to node 3 plus the drop from node 5 to node 4, which is the source current times the impedance for the inductor plus the current from node 5 to node 4 times the impedance for the resistor. But if we use the relationship, the current division relationship for the current from node 5 to node 4, we'll get a result that depends on the source current and the impedances for all of the elements. Now let's look at another example that has a voltage source along with a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor. And again, if we use the source frequency to determine the impedances for all of the elements, we can redraw the circuit like this and solve for the circuit's currents and voltages. We might, for example, use the mesh current method with I1 being the mesh current on the left, I2 being the mesh current on the right. Now moving clockwise from node 0 in the first loop, we get negative, adding up all of the voltage drops, we get negative Vs plus I1 times Zr plus I1 minus I2 times Zc, and that gets us back and we set all of that equal to 0. For the second loop, starting at node 2, we get I2 minus I1 times Zc plus I2 times Zl, and that gets us back, and we set that all equal to 0. Now, let's look at an example where the voltage source has a voltage of 4 volts with a phase of 120 degrees at a frequency of 180 hertz, the resistor has a resistance of 120 ohms, the capacitance 30 microfarads, the inductance 40 millihenries, and let's suppose we'd like to know the voltage drop from node 5 to node 4. Now using these values and managing our calculations with Mathematica, we might start by defining the circuit element values where the phase for the source is in degrees. Next we could define the source voltage where we convey the phase from degrees to radians for the exponential function, and in Mathematica, the square root of negative 1 is the capital symbol I. Next, we specify the impedance for the resistor, for the inductor, for the capacitor, and then we set up the equations for loop 1 and loop 2, and then use Mathematica's solve function to solve the two equations for I1 and I2. We can follow that by using the appropriate commands to extract the results into the variables I1 and I2, and then using the result for I2 and the impedance for the inductor, we can finally solve for the voltage drop from node 5 to node 4. And when we display that, we can get the amplitude and the phase, which we can convert from radians to degrees. And accordingly, the phasor voltage is approximately 2.30428 volts with a phase angle of 65.1747 degrees. 
Now as a function of time, this is approximately 2.30428 times a cosine with a frequency of 180 hertz and a phase of 65.1747 degrees or 0.362082 times pi expressed in radians.